What's up everyone, my name is Brett and sometimes I wear a beanie. And congratulations, this is my final video on all things gel ball. Ah, it's been a long time coming. We've been through a lot, but this is it. This is the last time, and you can hold me accountable to that, that I will be talking about all things related to gel ball blasting. We've got a few things to wrap this all up. We're looking at the Mr. Beast stuff that has officially come out. We're looking at gel blaster stuff. Specifically, the David Dobrik collaboration. And we'll be looking at some of Gelzone's offerings that they did send me for review free of charge. That is the only thing that I got for free in this video, but I will disclose again once we get to that segment. You probably already noticed this is a pretty long video, so feel free to skip ahead as you see fit. I'm sorry for all of it. But I want to make sure I talked about anything I wanted to in this final video on the topic because there are a few things that I've been waiting to look at now that some months have passed, now that we are on the cusp of gel ball taking over the world. What do I think? And with that, let's begin. Mr. Beast! It is time to talk about the Mr. Beast Gelfire Blaster, a blaster that was supposed to come out in the middle of April, but in honor of this special occasion, a merging of the Nerf Gelfire world and the entertainment world of Mr. Beast, I have gone all out. And by all out, I mean I got myself a Mr. Beast burger because I've never tried one, because why would I? I also never order through like delivery apps. This is like the third time ever. I did look for the Feastables like Mr. Beast chocolates in Walmart and I couldn't find any. So I'm not gonna review those in this video because I don't feel like driving around to a bunch of places just to maybe get chocolate. I am happy that this came in a Mr. Beast burger flavored package because I've seen the videos of other people ordering stuff and it's coming in random packages, which is why I'm also curious what the quality of the burger is going to be like. All right, it's like two in the afternoon. I haven't eaten yet. I'm hungry. Yep, that is, uh, this is one of the Beast Burgers I have ever seen. And there it is. Nope. There it is. Wait a minute. Hold on just a second. I ordered the Beast Style Double Burger and that contains Smashed crispy beef patties with house seasoning, American cheese, pickles, diced white onion, mayo, ketchup, and brown mustard on a toasted bun. And I scrolled down real quick to see the Chris style, which is um, similar, but it has crinkle fries on a toasted bun. And that's kind of what I'm seeing right, right here, right up top, right immediately. And some bacon poking out there. Yeah, yeah. No, it's fine. I only paid $10 for the burger and then like another 10 for all the delivery stuff. Is it good? Let's find out. It's pretty dry. There's a lot of bun and the um, the bacon seems pretty well, well cooked. It's not like super crispy, but it's crispy enough. It's just the fries, you know, with them being real basic. Yeah, they don't, they don't help. I could have purchased some of those fries and Made this myself, most likely. Fries on top, cheese, bacon, and burger. So um, that's where the flavor's missing from. This is a, a mid-burger. I'll finish it, I'll eat it, because I'm hungry. I don't think I need to order this again. How can I transition this appropriately? Uh, let's see. Like Mr. Beast Burger, the Mr. Beast Gel Fire Blaster does exist, and it does exist in my possession. Now, this is not the first video that I'm showing off the Mr. Beast Gel Fire Blaster in. Mr. Beast! Mr. Beast! I've already used this in a game without the Gel Fire rounds, of course. Mr. Beast! But I don't need to dive too deep into this blaster because we already know it is just a repainting of the Gelfire Mythic. And that was what we all knew when it was first announced in December of 2022. It was a bit of a letdown. Oh, Mr. Beast is gonna have a gel blaster. Okay, I thought he was gonna have like a Nerf limited blaster. Oh, it's a, it's a repaint. Okay, the biggest difference of course being the hopper on the Mr. Beast blaster is a bit more streamlined. With this hopper though, you do get an increase in capacity. This is advertised to have 800 round capacity, even though it can probably do like a thousand plus. This one is advertised at holding 300, and it can hold probably a little bit more than that too. It's also worth noting that because of this hopper's shape, it probably doesn't feed as reliably as this one. 
uh-oh, that's a problem, because what do we know about the Mythic? It doesn't feed very reliably. But did they fix it in the Mr. Beast Blaster? Well, from what I've seen, it's basically the exact same. It's the exact same when it works. Can you even see that? So you just give it a little bit of a shake every now and then and it should feed okay. Now, obvious observations that are in fact obvious, you can in fact put the Mr. Beast Hopper on the Mythic. You can put the Mythics Hopper on the Mr. Beast Blaster. You can switch the barrels. You can switch the batteries in the handle. Both of them have a noisy, extendable stock. And if we pull out another recent addition to the Gelfire line, yes, both blasters can take the little tiny Legion Hopper, although, you cannot put the Mr. Beast Hopper <laughs> on the Legion because you have to turn it into place. Oh, it's it's just catching, you see that? For those of you who are wondering who are gonna do this to your Legion, it actually would look kind of funky like that. Now looking more at the Hopper as well, I know it's upside down, but these little notches on the side are a bit sharp. I only have the one of mine to look at, so I don't know if that's a recurring problem, but the Mythics Hopper was definitely not as sharp. You can't see that, take my word for it. You can also see because it covers the eyewear required bit on the back, they had to put it on the hopper itself, which is kind of funny. Possibly the most interesting discussion point on this blaster is the price. This blaster retails for 70 United States dollars. That's pretty expensive. But when it was announced, that was actually kind of shocking because the Mythic retails for 80. So you're telling me the collaboration with one of the biggest influencers on the planet is cheaper and it includes twice as much ammo. None of them are prehydrated, but it includes 20,000 gel fire rounds. I mean, this has colored plastic on it as well, some stickers that are specialized. So how the heck did they do that? Does that mean it's a good buy? Well, <laughs> you guys are obviously probably thinking it, the mythic is overpriced. On paper, I would argue the Mr. Beast Blaster is a better deal, but that's assuming you've bought into the price of the Mythic at retail value, which I'm going to say you shouldn't. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> But it's still kind of weird because I can't think of the last time that I saw a collaboration blaster cost less than the advertised retail price of the original blaster. I was curious when I first saw the Mr. Beast Gelfire blaster teased in a Mr. Beast video if they were ever going to talk about it again. And at this time, they haven't. Oh, we're gonna have a big old Gelfire battle and if you buy a Mr. Beast Blaster, you can compete. Some special competition, you know, what Jimmy is known for with his big old, like, over-the-top videos. I mean, if you've got your own, like, branded Gel Blaster, your own branded Nerf Blaster, I I'm surprised that doesn't come to mind. Maybe it has and they just said it wasn't worth it. I'm curious if they're ever going to mention it again on, like, the Mr. Beast YouTube channel, Instagram, TikTok, or whatever, because less than a week before, Another company announced a Gel Blaster collaboration. I don't know if that went anywhere, but I, I picked one up. It's so plain. How could you forget all of the toppings? All of them. And mess my order up. It was one order. I ordered one burger, guys. Come on. I give my not Mr. Beast burger uh, the same score as the Mr. Beast Mythic. Why? Why? Oh. Gel Blaster. Yes, the company makes gel ball blasters and they call themselves Gel Blaster. How to show up first in the search results. Full disclosure time, Gel Blaster reached out to me in late 2022 about a potential sponsored video. I did not take them up on their offer. I did reach out out of curiosity and they were offering to send me a blaster or two with a monetary incentive. I thought that was a little bit weird. It seemed a little bit unethical to make a video about a blaster while being paid to talk about it. I received free products and then made videos with like very limited strings attached. And that's what I asked them instead. Would you be willing to send me the blaster and for me to make a video about it? But they still wanted me to sign something. And I was like, okay, then I guess this is not going to work. This was also right around the time I was fully embracing the Gelfire challenge. 
So I was like, you know what? Just, I don't wanna deal with this right now. As the gel ball scene was really ramping up, I was keeping track of what Gel Blaster was doing. The thing that really pushed it over for me, that made me think, I need to check this out and see what happens, was they announced a partnership and it is currently hiding right behind me. That I purchased myself. I was not sent it for review, for free, anything. I went out and bought it because again, Gel Blaster was like, we can't send it to you for free. This is the Gel Blaster Starfire David Dobrik edition. First off, the Gel Blaster Starfire. That is a blaster based off of their existing model, the Gel Fire Surge. Technically, I've never actually played with the Gel Fire Surge, but just looking it up online, it looks like it comes in between 50 and 60 United States dollars. And then if you take that to the next level, you can get the Gel Blaster Starfire. The Starfire is a repaint of the Surge. It's a little bit more expensive. I'm seeing $80 on their website. But the special feature of the Gel Blaster Starfire is the glow in the dark rounds. It's advertised as being a glow in the dark friendly offering. But okay, the special thing about this Gel Blaster Starfire is that it's blue because it's the David Dobrik edition. Upon announcing that I had this thing many months ago, a lot of people on my channel didn't know who David Dobrik was. How do I best explain this? David Dobrik is an online entertainer. I think that's a very fair thing to say. He's been through a few more controversies than Mr. Beast. I think that's another fair thing to say. He's known for his over the top, very high energy vlogs. At least he was when he was making them. Then he almost got someone seriously hurt some other serious allegations that I don't want to get into. Now I think he just kind of shows up on various social media platforms like TikTok or Snapchat. I don't know, I don't follow the guy really. He's able to still do things like this because the reason that this exists, if I followed correctly, was that he made a TikTok with a gel blaster and he literally just showed that off to his audience and then some months pass and all of a sudden he's got his own. And then he makes another like maybe one or two TikToks showing off a really crazy uh, battle in the dark. And I, when I say battle, I mean... Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! And it looks cool. I mean, they glow in the dark, yeah. And I don't want to clean that mess up. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, um, come on, come on. Where does it say it? Where does it say it? Uh, Eco safe glow, leave zero mess. Sorry, it says on the box. There was, there was zero mess. There was none. Holy cow, my entire bathroom is covered in the gel blasters. And this thing cost me 70 United States dollars, the same price as the Mr. Beast one, meaning that it is not a weird thing to compare the two on that scale alone. Where the Mr. Beast blaster had a really unique box and some flashy colors, the David Dobrik Starfire is like pretty boring. But what am I saying? There's a, there's a smiley face inside the box. One nice thing that Gel Blaster does is they give you pre-hydrated rounds. Now, they give you blue ones that are already hydrated. I already switched these out for Glow in the Darks because I was testing those out out of curiosity. But they also give you two different barrels for two different FPS options, which I think is a great idea. And on some of their larger blasters, I believe there's a knob that you can turn, something to dial down the power a little bit. You also get this certificate of authenticity so people can know 100% for certain, this is my David Dobrik gel blaster, except no one cares about that. And the instructions are on the bottom, and it says right here, your gel blaster currently comes with the standard barrel pre-installed, 175 FPS. You can remove it with the uh, lower powered barrel, which will reduce it to 100 FPS. The David Dobrik symbol is on both sides, that DD, um, but fun fact about it, <coughs> look at that quality. Oh, and what's that underneath? <coughs> That's their logo again. Surprise! There's your higher powered barrel, and I can um, use this little included tool to remove it, like so. Thread in this orange barrel, which is the lower powered one, and lock it into place. Clicky trigger, and then on the back there, you've got currently off, and if you rock it one way, it's semi-auto, and rock it the other way, it's full auto. This, you install two AAA batteries, and you get lights, slide that up top. And that means you shouldn't have to illuminate them before putting them into the blaster. The blaster attachment should do that for you. You can also see you just uh, kind of screw that into place. It means it's on there pretty well and tight, um, but it's also gonna take a little bit more of an effort to remove it if you need to reload. And the capacity on this is dot, 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 up to 800 gelets. Ugh, gelets, gel pellets, gelets. 
800, again, just like the Mythic. We're not gonna get the full glow effect right now, but we can at least just take a few quick test shots. Full auto. For some reason, this doesn't seem to be feeding as well. Yeah, that seems to, oh, hello. That's why I'm wearing eye protection. All right, break my ears. God. There's a little light on the bottom too that you can see when it is on. Wow. This thing is definitely louder than the uh, gel fire blasters. Okay, interesting discovery. When I left the cap on those gel balls for a while, I've uh, created this little concoction. What is that? I'll put some chronograph data up now along with some testing in the dark, but I already know with the pre-installed barrel, that white one, it is definitely shooting hotter than the Gelfire Mythic because very few things shoot lower than the Gelfire Mythic. Oh, wait, the Gelfire Legion. That shoots worse than the Gelfire Mythic. But what I do know about Gel Blaster is they keep showing up in my Instagram recommended or Facebook recommended when I jump on that platform. All these ads from random people who just got their Gel Blaster Surge or Gel Blaster Starfire and they can't wait to show you what's what. Use this discount code for 10% off. And if you've remotely heard about Gel Blasters, you've been somewhat interested, you've clicked on maybe like one video, there's a good chance you've gotten a gel blaster ad. And that's where I can't help but laugh because the people who are promoting them are like, oh, these families playing outside or me with my husband, me with my wife, like running around, oh, gel blasters, they're all good and fun. Quick little adverts of people playing inside or outside and then saying, oh, it's mess free. This has been available since the end of 2022. Is the big influencer tie-in going to move mountains? No one's talking about this. No one, no one cares. And I did my digging. YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. There are very few reviews of this thing. Now there was one video I saw from Amanda of Swell Entertainment, which was exactly what I was looking for. Someone who has very limited knowledge about gel blasters, knows they exist, knew David Dobrik existed, and as a result was curious what that was all about, purchased one herself, and then made a short. Because the whole point of having that influencer tie-in would be, hey, you know this person, right? Well, they're using product X, product Y. You want product X and product Y now, right? So naturally you have comments like, I have no idea what the purpose of this product is, but I'm gonna watch this video anyways, cause Amanda, <laughs> that's a good sign. That sounds dangerous, seems on brand for him. Again, people poking fun at David Dobrik did dangerous things and now he makes a, uh, gel blaster that shoots pretty hard and for a uninformed audience that could actually be kind of dangerous. I love the fact that she knew she might need safety goggles. Yes, that's why they're included, but yeah, for people who are just learning about gel blasters and they're just gonna test them around like super close quarters, like you shoot it against the wall right here, oh yeah, that's gonna bounce back right at you. You better be wearing something to protect your eyes. Am I the only one thinking the whole time the neighbors are going to call the cops? Yeah, this thing's loud. Admit it, your inner child was absolutely ecstatic when you started shooting rapid fire. Yeah, that's obviously one of the appeals. Because of money. Yes, Amanda mentions at the very beginning. David Dobrik partnered with Gel Blaster because of money. This feels like a parent's worst nightmare. Mmm, very possibly. What is supposed to be David Dobrik about this? What do you mean? There's a DD on it, on both sides. That's like two David Dobriks in one blaster. Psh, silly. I think an important thing is to explain what Gel Blaster is because I've never heard of it. There you go. Years ago, I remember these being advertised as not needing cleanup because they explode on contact. Was that happening? Yes, but they still need cleanup. That's the best looking blaster I've ever seen. See, there you go with people being kind of uninformed. I bought two regular gel blasters for my husband and me as a Christmas present for him. I've tested it a few times, it's effing epic. So much better than Nerf guns because we have small children, but also much less painful than paintball. Win-win. Much, wait. So much better than Nerf guns because we have small children. Uh, what, because they're gonna choke on the Nerf darts or something? Do you know what this does? One thing to be wary of with those pellets is to make sure you get all of them off the floor if you have pets. They will eat them and the liquids of the stomach will cause the pellets to grow, seriously injuring or killing your animal. Eek. Since Gel Blaster has become more and more popular and some of those ads have been circulating, 
Those are some of the comments I see on the posts as well. People saying, do not ingest these. What do you think is gonna happen if you uh, swallow a bunch of these and then they need some uh, liquids to grow? They're gonna grow inside you. But yeah, I have seen some articles about what can go wrong if you ingest those, especially for younger kids. I hadn't even thought about what pets might do. I've been pretty good about cleaning up anytime I'm firing mine around. I, I wouldn't want him to eat them either. So thank you, Amanda, for reviewing the Gel Blaster on your channel because you have a completely different audience than what mine typically is in the other foam blasting community. When we talk about Gel Blasters, I think we're kind of preaching to the choir. But for you, your audience is what Gel Blaster really wants to get. And your interpretation and clearly some of these comments are saying, whoa, this is kind of, this is, might be a lot. You're selling this as like a toy? And also the full disclosure is, um, I think you confirmed this, is that you bought this because I informed you about it, which is pretty funny. I was waiting for someone to just find it organically who might be curious about David Dobrik, but if I'm the reason that you went and picked it up, I'm sorry for wasting $70. I hope it was worth it. David Dobrik Starfire. It exists, and I'm going to assume there are a lot more of these certificates of authenticity out there if you're looking to get one yourself from walmart.com. I'm really curious if this was a worthwhile partnership. Let me know, Gel Blaster. Gel Zone. Pro. No, your eyes do not deceive you. It's not Dart Zone. It's a gel zone from Primetime Toys. So yes, the parent company of Dart Zone. Full disclosure, of course, out of the way, this box was sent to me for free for review from Primetime Toys. So I thank them for that. I'm of course, therefore a little bit biased on these. I got a few different offerings that I looked at recently, including the Stormer. All of the blasters I have in front of me today from Gel Zone, I did make some shorts just overviewing the products, not really an in-depth review, just kind of testing a few claims really quick and showing them off. So let's at least take a little bit more of an in-depth look at some of these blasters. And I do have good things to say about the Gel Zone paint scheme overall. I, I like this color. A lot of companies seem to be gravitating towards a bluish or greenish uh, tint like Worker, Game Face, I like this trend. Can we can we stay on this trend? This is good. The hopper, of course, right here at the top is with this little nub. Safety on the side. When you prime the blaster, that does stick out the back, which could be a little awkward for folks, but it does keep the profile still pretty small. And then as I tested previously as well, it has a pretty, pretty good seal. So I think there is potential for this blaster if people don't even want to use it for gel stuff. My biggest gripe is that because the gel balls have to feed into the back, you do need to make sure that you're priming the blaster kind of at an upwards, like with the front tilted upwards when you prime it so that they can fall into place. Cause I have a few instances where I'm trying to fire level and they wouldn't feed as consistently. And that's because they were just kind of hiding out in the hopper. I think a lot of people laugh at the idea of a single shot spring powered uh, gel blaster. And I can totally see why, but if I had to compare this to the gel fire Legion, I mean, that one has slam fire. I guess that's the only thing I would say that one has going for it more than, than this guy. Now the Hydrax, this one I was curious about checking out because it seemed like a pretty fair comparison to the Mythic, a much cheaper offering, uh, a very different look while advertising, of course, a higher performance metric uh, and a internal hopper. In this package, you get uh, quite a few little gel fire, or, uh, God darn it, quite a few of these little gel packets. Oh my gosh, Gee, good grief. Oh, oh my Lord, I didn't. <laughs> Guys, are you saying we didn't have a larger bag? This is only 500 round packs. Okay, um, that's kind of hilarious. Pretty good size handle, nothing uh, crazy good or bad to say about that one, it just works. This little compartment on the bottom will let you access the battery. And the battery does seem like it rattles around a little bit when you've got it in the blaster, not too much, but you can kind of feel. And overall, the weird thing about the Hydrax is that it just kind of feels Cheaper? Is that the right way to say it? I can feel it just kind of like squishy a little bit more with this plastic because it's so hollow. Almost like this is a merger between the Gel Zone Pro paint scheme and the Hydro Strike uh, paint scheme we'll look at here shortly. Loading door on this one is pretty small. Again, um, I guess if you're using that little hydration pouch, it's not too big of an issue. It is full auto only. You can definitely control how fast you fire it by pulling the trigger, even though it does seem like there's a bit of a delay. I'll show you the size comparison really quickly. You can see it's almost the exact same size as the Mythic without the barrel. So yeah, it's it's really hard to recommend the Mythic over, over this. Like if I had to choose just between these two, 
yeah, you win. A simple firing demonstration isn't enough to prove that these blasters are better than others or that they're even good on their own merits. So that's why I'm going to recommend you check out Brandon Diaz's video on these blasters because he actually went outside and did some accuracy testing. And truth be told, they may not all be that accurate as much as they would like to be. So I apologize, I don't have that data from my immediate testing. I just don't have the same facilities and I haven't been able to find the time to go to a place where I would comfortably waste all this ammo outside. Which leads to the big boy, the Pulsar Pro. This one came out a lot earlier than these other Gel Zone Pro products. And this is also technically a Hydro Strike Blaster. I think it looks really cool. Obviously it doesn't match the previous color schemes. It looks very different. And some people have said, well, that's really weird and I don't like it. I disagree because I'm in the camp of when we first heard that the Pulsar Pro was going to be releasing, we were very disappointed to find out that it wasn't a dart blaster because this would be a really cool shell for a dart blaster. Give me some of those colors. Ignore this uh, tape on the front. I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> Someone was trying something stupid. I do, unfortunately, have to knock the paint scheme a little bit, not for what they were going for, but the closer you get though, the worse it gets. You can tell that yellow is the color underneath because you can see it poking through in a lot of areas. I mean, you can see it chipping away already and um, no, I have not used this extensively. I mean, you can also see inside that yellow is the primary color. Yeah, it's a little bit weird. Now it helps that there are areas where it is actually yellow and it's not just like, oh, those little bits of yellow are awkward, but pretty noticeable. This rail is nice. You get some attachments, which I guess you could put on other stuff as well. Handle also feels pretty comfortable. The trigger pull. Oh my gosh, what is happening here, guys? Look how far back you gotta pull that trigger to make it fire. Is it plugged in? Yes, it is. Yeah, look how far. Putting in the magazine, taking it out is uh, pretty easy. And I guess something you've also gotta be careful of is if you're holding the blaster like this, if you move your hand up too far, you accidentally would hit the button to open this compartment and drop the battery. Maybe we could have hidden that a little bit more. Now, based off the testing, it does seem to perform as advertised, but I did have some problems in single fire that after a bit of firing, it would sometimes just stop. And when I switched it to full auto, then it would work again. If I would turn it off and then back on again, then it seemed to work again as well. I don't know why it was intermittently stopping just on that one firing mode alone. Oh boy, more, more packets of 500, yay. This eye protection is also a pair of goggles. I mean, people love or hate these kinds of things. They are a little bit different than the ones included with the, some of those Dart Zone Pro blasters, but you know, I appreciate eye protection nevertheless. And another stock option is fine. The Pulsar Pro is also the most expensive offering here. I did of course discover that if you put some tape here and you cover these little air holes because it's not sealed, you could in fact front load rival because it was the correct inner diameter. And when I say correct, I mean it worked. Does it work well? Mm, no. I guess the mythic wins in that category. The price on this one is definitely worth just for firing rival. You put a rival round just like that and you turn it on, you can go. Yes, technically it's a mod. It's a pretty janky mod. That's just like tape that I could make look even better, but it works. We've got another gel ball front loader. I forgot to explicitly mention it, but this little foldable target, the Hydro Strike gel bead blasters foldable target that I was using in my gel ball testing so I could catch all that stuff and not have it spread everywhere. This I also got for free from Gel Zone. This might be my favorite thing because I can use this for dart blasters as well. It's a good dart catch. And if you want something like this, I don't think they sell it, but you can search up like foldable targets and technically Dart Zone has one too. It's just a little pricey. So um, thank you. And also continuing our cursed drink saga, here I've got all flavors of relevant gel balls. You notice anything different about one of these? They're all different colors, Brett, obviously. The green ones though, they're a lot more opaque. Everything else is like, shiny, clear, they look like they're full of water. The green ones are so, so dark, like they're a matte finish almost. Anyways, bottoms up. All right, I'm gonna keep telling people that that's a joke. Please do not actually drink gel rounds. For anyone who's remotely interested or has paid attention to gel ball, you'll know that I have not reviewed the full breadth of gel blasters, gel ball blasters, not from gel blaster, I mean, all encompassing. I've shied away from just taking in everything, even though that would probably better form my opinion. But 
I think I've seen enough. So with my small but not minuscule sample size, what are my overall thoughts? Well, the pros. Gel ball blasting can be a lot of fun. It's high capacity, oftentimes high performance, high rate of fire, the glow in the dark feature. I think that is the coolest thing that has been brought to the table. I think there are some other companies that do it too, but Gel Blaster specifically, every time I see those glow in the dark rounds flying, I mean, how could you not think that's cool? Where does gel ball blasting kind of lose me? And maybe more broadly, the foam flinging hobby overall? Well, the obvious one, it's not foam. And the more I've observed gel ball in person and online, I've come to a realization. Gel ball is a conglomeration of kind of every blasting out there, right? You've got these really tiny, tiny rounds like airsoft with a high rate of fire, kind of like airsoft, maybe a little bit like paintball. Oh, but they also explode on impact like paintball. You can have them in high capacity hoppers, like paintball. They're kind of filled with water. Oh, like a water blaster or a super soaker. Well, that's interesting. And oftentimes bright, colorful blasting packages that seems to lean more towards a toy, a la Nerf Blaster. So in that sense, they tick all the boxes for something that you already love, but now in a new package. So you love it, right? I mean, in a certain sense, that's probably how they're getting some people interested, but ironically, I think that also makes it difficult for Gel Ball to have its own unique identity. As a result, everyone refers to Gel Ball like something else. People are seeing this new Gel Ball experience and it's like this. And so when people are trying to best define it, or more importantly, they're trying to best find a use case for it. You can play it here, you can play it there, you shouldn't play it there. They have to compare it to something else. I think gel ball is best suited for pre-existing paintball and airsoft fields. Not the backyard fun that a lot of uh, ads will recommend. Families love it. It's no mess, no cleanup. Where's my list? Mess free, eco-friendly, no pickup needed, non-toxic, safe for kids family fun. Okay, some of those are a little bit more towing the line on others. I would hope that they are non-toxic overall, unless you uh, ingest them. You should not do, I have to keep saying that. The biggest elephant in the room pertaining to those claims is that gel balls just, they disappear. After you fire them, they break down, they're gone. You don't have to worry about them. Which, hey, that is pretty cool. We've always wanted biodegradable darts. Biodegradable is a word, and it's a word that's typically not seen in gel ball ads because there's no evidence that they are biodegradable. But most people have caught on at this point where if you have an absorbent material that grows with water, but then shrinks if there's no water, and that is still, you know, hits the ground, it breaks apart, well, it doesn't go to nothing. Should I be firing this into the ground? A lot of them will recommend to fire outdoors rather than indoors, but you get the concerns. We're putting microplastics onto the ground. Oh, but Brett, haven't you heard? We litter with darts when we use those too. So what's the big deal? We leave debris all the time. Well, there is an argument to be made there. We do often leave some darts. They are notorious for getting away from us. But if you think about that for another five seconds, Darts are designed to be picked up again. It makes more sense for your wallet to pick up darts and reuse them. Yes, we do have to throw certain ones away and inevitably some will get lost. But the idea is you can reuse darts. Gel balls are not designed to do that. They are designed to burst on impact. Sometimes they don't, and I guess you could reuse them, I guess but you're not supposed to based off of every company out there. And personally, I'm not a fan. I feel guilty every time I fire these things off into a field of grass, cause it's like, uh, should I have done that? I mean, all these ads are doing it. So <laughs> what's the worst that I can do? Which is why I also like firing it into a actual target and then just dumping that into the trash. Hence my statement earlier, I'd rather use gel ball at pre-existing airsoft and paintball fields. Cause there's already debris just littered around there with the broken or hard paintball rounds and then just airsoft BBs scattered everywhere. And I've seen a rise with places like that advertising gel ball blasters. It makes sense. And I think they could be a lot of fun at that field too. If you get the right blasters for everyone to use, I could absolutely see that being a cool experience. And to gel blasters credit, I have seen them putting up like pop-ups and having more experiences for people to play gel ball, which I guess it's good if they're gonna bring the venue, bring the experience, bring the stuff. I'll just have to assume a 1v1 Gelfire Mythic experience is good enough for me.
There's certainly an argument to be made that I never should have looked into the gel ball stuff because it was a rabbit hole. And all of a sudden, once you start talking about gel ball on your channel, you start getting all these offers, some from more reputable companies than others, some that look like they're gonna break after less than a week of usage. And yeah, I wish I would stop getting those emails and making another video like this is not gonna help that case. But in the same vein, I can't judge other people who have also looked into gel ball blasting because it just has been so heavily advertised to the masses. What I'll at least say is as long as you're not bringing those to our foam flinging events, you're fine with the caveat of if it can still fire rival. And that's kind of my philosophy moving forward. I have the Mr. Beast gel fire blaster so I can single load rival balls, which is kind of funny. Otherwise, I, I really don't need any of these other things. There are going to be more nerfed gel fire blasters and yeah, I'll be curious to see what they look like, but otherwise I just don't care. There are still companies that believe gel ball is going to be huge. It's going to be a massive market, a huge cash cow. And then every week it seems like a different state in the U.S. is um, having new restrictions or considering new bans on them. So I don't really know where it's going to go from here. Oh my gosh, I didn't even touch more on the Nerf and Gel Blaster legal troubles. Um, I'm going to reference Blaster Hub for more information on that because I think for now I'm pretty gel fired out. I do appreciate those of you who have watched and engaged with my gel ball related videos. I know it was something I really didn't want to do initially and then I got involved with it and I had to see it through. So thank you for sticking with me and again you can hold me to it. This is the end of all things gel ball related on my channel. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Subscribe for less gel ball and I will see you in the future. You want me to do it? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by the toe. Ooh, classic orange. Oh, pff, there was a lot more water at the bottom than I expected. That serves me right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, that really ends it. I'm never touching gel ball again. <laughs>